The following video will be using specific music theory terminology and concepts that the casual viewer might have troubles understanding. For this reason, we will briefly address some of these concepts and terminology that will be discussed. Ostinato. An ostinato is a short musical line or melody that is repeated throughout a piece of music, usually seen in the same voice. Fragment. A fragment or fragmentation can be characterized as the division of a musical idea separated into segments. Chromaticism. Chromaticism is the procession of notes in contrast to or adding to tonality. Think of a piano. Chromaticism happens when playing both the black and white keys in order from left to right or right to left. Mode. A mode is a type of musical scale that is characterized with specific patterns or set behaviors. While mode as a term is a very broad concept, the modes I'll be discussing today are those commonly used in pop music. These use the same notes as a major scale, but have a different starting note. This starting note is called the tonic. Hope this helped and enjoy the video! In 1994, Nintendo released the Super Nintendo game Donkey Kong Country, which achieved widespread popularity and generated a new innovative use of music and gameplay. Now you're probably wondering how Nintendo did this. Well, they used a style of music called progressive rock. In David Wise's soundtrack for Donkey Kong Country, Nintendo expanded its range of musical styles and functions as a contributor to ensuring their status as a top contending video game company. Prog rock is a subgenre of rock that was created around the mid to late 60s in the United Kingdom and the United States that can be characterized as combining elements of diverse styles with instrumental emphasis. For context, let us begin with a brief discussion of Nintendo's development in game design and sound from its early beginnings. Starting in 1977 to 1978, the video game industry began to rise in popularity through arcades. Throughout the 1960s to 1970s, when first-generation home consoles were created, sound in video games was limited and often only resulted accidentally. It was only when Pong was released on the Atari home console in 1975 that sounds were used deliberately. By the end of the 1970s, arcades were growing in popularity, with Nintendo as a primary arcade console producer. After Atari's success with their home console, Nintendo decided to follow suit by shifting away from the arcade business releasing the Famicom Home Computer in 1983 in Japan. This was re-released internationally in 1985-86 and rebranded as the Nintendo Entertainment System, now commonly abbreviated as the NES. In the late 80s, video game music began to emerge as a vital component for rival companies Nintendo and Sega. Sega's music in the games at this time was well known for its progressive rock stylistic traits, partially motivated by their desire to ensure that none of their material was too catchy. From a marketing perspective, Sega's use of prog rock projected a cooler, more mature image, which contrasted with Nintendo's less successful, child-friendly approach to gaming. Nintendo was seen as a company targeted towards children, with more pop tuny music that would be very catchy, but not what larger audiences wanted at the time. Progressing into the 16-bit era of music with Donkey Kong Country, creators needed to up the ante musically as well. The next step for Nintendo was to recreate the standard for their music and implement it in new games. One method they used to accomplish this was to incorporate more popular music of the era. However, in other games such as Donkey Kong Country, they instead modeled the same prog rock style Sega was using at the time. The prog rock elements that created this Sega style included, as Kara Collins describes in Game Sound, an emphasis on keyboard instrument sounds rather than guitar, a rhythm section consisting of bass guitar and drums with added percussion sounds, as well as a synthesizer sound resembling an organ or other lead instruments uncharacteristic of traditional rock style. Small melodic riffs, often in the form of mid-register ostinatos, were also frequently used. The repetition of these brief melodic fragments as well as the repetition of chord progressions produced, as McCann describes in Collins, larger, more complex units. Finally, the use of modal harmony and chromaticism became more prominent in this style as well. David Wise was given the task of composing Donkey Kong Country's music for video game company Rare, along with two other composers. At this time, Wise had already had some experience working for Rare. Within a year of being employed, Wise had composed scores for over a dozen games, and by year two, he was composing entire video game soundtracks with his biggest project ahead of him. 
It's important to mention prog rock was quite popular in England during the 1970s, where David Wise was residing before working for Nintendo. Wise followed common characteristics of prog rock, such as fragmentation, chromaticism, use of modes, distortion, melodic emphasis in music, and driving rock rhythms. We can see the use of prog rock in one of Wise's pieces for Donkey Kong Country, called Fear Factory. Fear Factory starts with an introduction. We see added layers of harmony on top of the electronic synth that plays the ostinato. Fear Factory also includes short fragments, bars 5, 7, 9, and 11, of drums playing during this introduction, and by bar 13, the piece has a driving rock rhythm repeated throughout the piece. Section A then begins at bar 17, with the new theme played by the marimba under the ostinato and driving rock rhythm. After a short 8-bar phrase, B begins at bar 25 with a new synth melody superimposed above the previous voices heard in the A section. Section C then arrives at bar 33 with the brass synth playing the root of each chord to emphasize the embellished melody in the top line. A comes back in bar 45, repeating the same melody heard earlier with no changes. Starting at bar 53, A slash B has both elements of A, the marimba melody, and B, the brass synth melody, layered together. This includes slight variations in the synth melody at bar 59 with the different rhythms than the first B at bars 25 to 32. The piece then ends at bar 64 by looping back to the beginning. We see the use of distortion and unconventional sounds in the music of Fear Factory, with metal percussive echoes in the background, and a strange synth timbre used as well. This can be seen predominantly in the intro, bars 1 to 16, where the fragments of percussion and synth drone are played. In Fear Factory, melodic content is significant to exemplify the use of prog rock. Harmony and distortion are incorporated here to help identify the form in the piece. Distortion also creates an effect for the level's overall mood that can immerse the player into the virtual world. Akira Yamaoka, composer for the game Silent Hill, also emphasizes distortion in his music for the game by creating an aesthetic that approximates a mix of industrial music, glitch music, Japanese noise music, punk, and other countercultural genres that emphasize the use of unconventional sounds. Karen Collins elaborates on this concept, defining it as industrial music built around non-musical and often distorted, repetitive, percussive sounds of mechanical, electric, and industrial machinery, commonly reflecting feelings of alienation and dehumanization as a form of social critique. The effect on the level's mood immerses the player by inviting them to react on a personal level. This allows the player to make decisions in gameplay based on those emotions or reactions. The fragments seen in Fear Factory are expanded in other parts of motives transposed or added in other voices. For example, this is heard in Motive B's melody, played in the synth brass, and occurs as a three-bar compression, bars 35 to 37, in Motive C. Joseph Strauss calls this concept composing out by enlarging the motives of the musical surface and project them over significant musical distances. In the case of Fear Factory, the motive spread across B, bars 25 to 32, is composed in, during C, particularly bars 35 to 37, as a compressed version of B in a different voice. In these examples, we can see that prog rock is implemented in Wise's soundtrack, even in small, subtle details. David Wise's music for Donkey Kong Country has revolutionized video game music since its release in 1994 through the use of prog rock. This can be seen in fragmentation and distortion in Fear Factory. These musical elements and use of prog rock expanded Nintendo's opportunity to surpass competition that were using similar components and influenced later game composers' music. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.